Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Malik, and uh, I am sorry I hadn't posted in a while. There's been a lot going on, but uh, I'm back in, at the hackthissite.org. Um, I'm working on a couple other sites too, and on a on an entire uh, uh, compilation of videos on cryptography, all from the earliest cryptography all to where we're sitting at right now. Uh, but for now. Um, we've done the basic missions. We've done the realistic. Uh, I think it's time to head into the Stego missions because some of those are uh, a little bit interesting. Um, I'm not too much into programming. I don't do a whole lot of programming, so I really couldn't help you guys out in that. Uh, phone freaking is something that eh, is not really done as much anymore since not a lot of people use POTS lines. Um, but we'll do some of the Stego missions together, and then we'll some, we're going to move to some other sites like um, uh, Hack Me, um, and maybe even get into um, Bandit. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at one of the one of the Stego missions. We got some pretty cool ones inside of here. Uh, so I'm going to go into Stego. There's 17 overall missions, and we're going to go right into mission one okay uh, so if you guys have watched my other videos you know kind of how I work it I'll give you a little bit of information there tell you what to go out and research how to try some things on your own then you'll come back to the video if you're stuck I'll give you maybe another hint or so and then we'll solve it all together but there's some things you need to understand about Stego first and foremost um, or you're going to be stuck on all these. When we're dealing with image steganography or even video steganography or audio steganography or even folder steganography, um, steganography works by, because of course the reason why we're doing it, we're hiding data inside of a carrier vessel, much like an image or an audio file. Well, it works by using a program that will take these two completely separate files and merge them together uh, without seemingly altering the carrier vessel which in this case is going to be an image well it does alter it it just doesn't alter it where we can see it there is something called the least significant bit that's in the case of a byte where we're dealing with with eight locations the least significant bit is the eighth location so it's the last location of every bit by modifying that bit that's where the data is being held so if you're able to look at the hex um, of the image or the audio file or whatever and pull out the least significant bit out of all of them which are going to be hex, but are going to have to be converted to binary and then converted to ASCII. Um, then you'll be able to pull the message back. So they gave us one hint here. So remember, least significant bit. They gave us a message here. We have an image training the hacker underground. It says it's an encoded message, and the only tip you get is two null bytes. So this is what you, you guys need to take a look at look up what they mean by a null byte and what a null byte looks like in hex okay that's a huge giveaway also you are only going to be able to figure out this and a, a couple of other stegos by using some sort of hex editor now you can use whatever you want but i typically use one called hex edit it's a very simple program free download this is not version 5 which is in beta um, this is actually version 4 but we're able to bring in that image and take a look at the hex dump well if we can take a look at the hex dump and we understand the null bytes we'll be able to find some data in there that's pretty interesting okay now there is a huge catch inside of this one. They've made this one a little bit more difficult um, 
by not quite giving you everything. You, you have to kind of brute force some stuff here. So it's a little bit harder um, than it should be <laughs> for, for the first mission. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, download HexEdit and install it. And um, download the picture here. So just, of course, right click on it. Um, save it. It's a bitmap. Save it to your desktop or wherever. We're going to need that. You can open that up in hex edit. Do some research on what they mean by um, null byte. And take a look through the hex code and see if you can find data between two null bytes. Okay, so I'm going to give you that. See if you can pull that one off. And then when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, so let's take a look at it. I'm going to open up Hex Edit. And I am going to open up that file. This is that 1.bitmap file. Now, we are looking at the hex code over on this side. All of this is the hex code that draws out that image. Okay? Alright. Now, if you did your research on what they mean by a null byte, then you probably came up that they mean 0, 0. Right there. That is considered a null byte. Okay. Now, they said two null bytes. So we're looking for 0, 0, 0, 0 together. Well, this is where it gets a little tricky in the beginning. Because you're going to find a whole lot of zero zeros up here at the top. Well, this is part of the header file. The real data for the file really doesn't start to appear until you get down here. Inside of these numbers where you see 3D, 41, 49, 4D, 51, blah, 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 blah. All of those. And same as those 16s and 17s and things like that. So, the easiest way to find it is to just do a find. And I'm going to look for 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, it's going to find a bunch at the top. But, and I've done a search through here before, so mine kind of jumped to it. Ah, look. In the middle of all this data, we have 0, 0. And then down here, we also have another 0, 0. There are your two null bytes. The starting of it and the ending of it. But wait, what is all of this hex stuff here? That's 16 and 17. Okay. This is when we get into the least significant bit. Because I can tell you where I get the numbers from. Or I, I can tell you that 16 equals 0, 17 equals 1. But you're just going to respond back and go, well, how do you know 16 equals 0, 17 equals 1? Okay. This is how I know. I have a hex to binary converter here. If I put in 16 in hex and I convert it, look at the binary of it. This is how we make 16 in binary. Okay? Okay. Well, remember the least significant bit? That's this one. We're not worried about all this other stuff. We're just worried about this one. So 16 equals 0. That's the least significant bit. Well, what do you think 17 is going to equal? It equals 1. Okay. So, 16s are zeros, 17s are 1s. What we need to do is take a look at this code here. All of these 16s and 17s. Now I'm going to do mine in Notepad. Okay. 
and I am just going to write down zeros and ones. Now you want to make sure you're right here. So every 16 is a zero, 17s are ones. Everything between that 0, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 0, 0. So I've got two 16s, three 17s. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, next line, line 480. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Next line. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Next line. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. It's the same thing as what you see up here. 16, 16, 17, 17, 17, except for I just made 16, 0, and 17, 1s. Now we've basically converted that over the least significant bit. We change that to binary. All right, now to make life easy, I'm gonna turn these into bytes. So eight, eight bits, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna put them in their own little line. And this is where you're gonna find out we have a problem. Okay. Now, I will tell you what you see here is part of our password. In fact, it's almost all of our password but you notice we're one bit short. They didn't give us a bit. That's the missing piece. This is trial and error, my friends. It's, I will tell you, it's a matter of adding a zero, but it's not as easy as throwing a zero onto the end. Okay, now, just so you can see, I'm just going to paste this down here. Okay. Now, I'm going to add a zero here just so we can have all full bits. And I'm going to make this one line. Just to kind of show you what we're going for. Okay. Now, this is all binary. If I copy that and put it into a binary to ASCII converter. Look what I come up with. 8FN garbage, garbage, garbage one. That shows you that adding that zero at the end is not the right way. Okay? So, adding a zero right here is not gonna work. Okay. This, my friends, unless you guys know of a better way to do it, was just trial and error for me. Now, you can try to add a zero here, see what you come up with. I'm going to just show you, though. I'm not going to show you where it goes. I'm just going to show you that if you decide to add, let's say, a zero right here, if you think a zero goes in the front, or if you want to try it out, what you have to do, again, let me copy this so I don't mess up my original stuff. If you decide to add a zero right here, well, that's going to be one too many characters here. So you're going to have to take this zero and move it to here. 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 Now you're all full. You can put them together in one long string and try to do a binary off of it. So let's just try that just to see what we come back with. Okay, again, gonna put it in my binary. 
8F7HAS6. That's worth trying out. So, you can try it in a couple of different spots. Try it in a couple of different spots. If you come back with something that looks like a full password that you can physically type in, try it. Okay, so I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to, to play around with that. See if you can come up with a, a password that works. If you come up with a password that works, you try it in and it's not successful, fine. Try to put the zero somewhere else. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to try that. Okay. Very cool. Alright, so guys, you saw that I did that. Alright. Well, if you tried it, you were probably successful. Um, it would work, actually, even if you added it in multiple places. If I would have added it the zero up here. Again, I could have taken this zero out, added it here, taken that zero out, added it here, that zero out, added it here, that zero out, added it here, that zero out, added it here. Again, delete all my spaces. So I can paste it all in at once. Drop it inside of here. Now that one came back with 837HAS6. Only one number changed. So as you guys probably noticed, you probably tried it in a couple of spots. You probably noticed you came up with answers, a couple of possible answers. But this is the one, 837HAS6, 837HAS6, check it, and now I have the go on button. So there you go my friends, you have taken a look at hexadecimal code nulls, hexadecimal code that has to be converted to binary code in order for you to pull ASCII. We couldn't have gone straight from um, hex to uh, ASCII. It wouldn't have worked. We'd have to convert it first. So now you're able to play with the hex editor. Okay. So next one that comes around, we actually have to deal with an audio file, in which case we're going to have to open it up in an audio program, run some filters against it in order to find the envelope, and have that give us the password for mission number two. All right, so that's this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, click that old subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the like button. Um, I am uh, I'm mean, putting these out, you know, to to help you guys out. And plus, I do it as a side job too. So, uh, you know, if you can contribute anything to the to the cause of making these videos, definitely do so. Um, I am working on a, a whole bunch of videos to come up uh, of anything that you guys you know, really want to see. But I'm doing a large cryptography one, um, and we're going to run through all these stegos too, as well as a couple other sites that I've been playing with. All right, so. Again, this is Malik. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you on the next video.